A few weeks ago, I made a cryptids iceberg that did extremely well for my channel, and whilst a lot of people shat on me in the comments, many others really enjoyed the video. They enjoyed it so much, in fact, that they were asking, nay, begging me to follow it up with a part two, which is much obliged on my part because I really liked how the video came out in the end. So that's what we're going to do in this present moment, but we're also going to do something a bit different. So today I'll be speaking about creatures that have been allegedly discovered or rediscovered but have no explanation. This is the deepest mysterious creatures iceberg explained. The first creature we have up on the list today is the Flatwoods Monster, which is an entity supposedly based in West Virginia, with reports of the monster being sighted in the town of Flatwoods, West Virginia of course. It was first supposedly spotted all the way back in September 1952, following the appearance of a bright object crossing the sky. People describe this so-called monster as absolutely massive, standing at over 10 foot tall and 4 foot wide. Set in the head were two eyes described as portholes glowing green and orange. The body was described as a metallic armoured structure lined with thick vertical pipes. People disagree over the colour of the so-called armour with some claiming it was black and others saying that it was green. Looking at the pictures online, this one actually seems to be one of the more unique looking creatures and one of the scarier looking ones at that. Now that's all well and good but if you saw the first cryptids video I did, you would know that when it comes to a lot of these creatures, people get very excited about these things and the Flatwoods monster is no different too because what is this and what is this? Would you? Yes! I would too go go monkey too, I would too. Back on topic though, I hate to break all of the hearts of the Flatwood Monster fans, but unfortunately it's thought that this thing was created to bank off the creation of Mothman, who had just reached national notoriety a short while before. This was thought to be some sort of tourism attraction, not actually being real. To add to this, over 50 years later, investigators concluded that the light in the sky that was spotted back in 1952 was actually a meteor, and the creature that people thought was the Flatwoods Monster was actually a barn owl perched in a tree, with shadows making it appear to be a large humanoid. So alas, this alien in a bin wasn't there on that fateful night back in 1952. Still, we'll head down this iceberg to try and find some real cryptids, so let's move. We won't actually have to look too far either because the ivory-billed woodpecker is up next on our list. A species of woodpecker that's had its numbers greatly reduced due to its habitat's destruction and overhunting. Its numbers became so low in fact that it was in Louisiana in 1944 that the last ever confirmed sighting of an ivory-billed woodpecker happened. Just like the thylacines I spoke about in the first video, this animal had gone extinct. Or had it. But you see, 60 years went past without a peep from the ivory-billed woodpecker, but after the turn of the 21st century, people began reporting that they had seen the ivory-billed woodpecker. Even better yet is that unlike the thylacines that are greatly debated, I think that the amount of footage that's been caught and the amount of scientists that have had their say, and just the all-around likelihood is that the ivory-billed woodpecker does still exist. I believe that the numbers of the species are extremely small, however I, as well as many scientific experts out there, believe that there is a relatively high chance that the ivory-billed woodpecker is still out there, somewhere, rebuilding their numbers, healing, and will eventually, hopefully, come out of their hiding without fear of humans taking them out again. The Lusca is stupid. It's interesting, don't get me wrong, but this is the first time I've heard of it, and it does interest me. But if anyone thinks this thing is real, I'd be interested to know how many biology lessons they took. It's a massive octopus with a shark head. Now, that sounds cool. And granted, the design is pretty sick, but just in terms of evolution, this thing would be impossible. It's not like a shark and an octopus can just get together and then one generation later, this can happen. It's not a thing. Anyways, it was apparently sighted off the coast of the Bahamas back in 2011 after the body of a giant octopus washed up on the beach. Apparently, there was only a head, and I'm wondering where the gap of logic was to put this shark head on an octopus body, but I digress. Everyone on the Cryptids wiki seems to be really annoyed about this entry too, calling it Sharktopus after the 2010 film Sharktopus, which is probably where the idea came from, especially if this cryptid was first spotted in 2011. They definitely ripped this off the movie. Stupid bullshit. Let's carry on going down the iceberg though. Many years ago, there was a tale of a creature larger than anything that humans had ever seen before. 
This behemoth of carbon molecules was said to live underwater and would eat whales, sharks, seals, and other large fish whole. This creature was called the Megalodon, and it was thought to have lived between 23 and 3.6 million years ago. The Megalodon could grow up to be 15 to 18 meters, making it three times larger than the largest great white shark ever recorded. It was truly a gargantuan piece of nature. However, with all that being said, the shark did die out 3.6 million years ago, with most people putting it down to it being hard to maintain enough food and energy to keep up with how huge the creature had become. So the Megalodon is dead, or is it? For you see, now the Megalodon is a cryptid and some people believe that they have seen what they think is the Megalodon swimming around the ocean. Unlike the ivory-billed woodpecker, I don't think that there's much evidence, videographic or otherwise, to support this claim, and especially because the animal is thought to have died over 3 million years ago, the scientists to get their extinction off by 3 million years would be quite unforgivable. But even still, it's just a theory that's out there, even if it's not founded in much evidence. Every now and then there'll be a creature that we know about, but we've never seen, and this is the same case for the 52 Hertz whale. Now, you might be wondering, how do we know about something if we've never seen it? In this case, how do we know about this whale? Well, its name provides us a clue, because we've heard it and its distinctive call of 52 Hertz before. Why, you might ask, is 52 Hertz a big deal? And to that I say that the noise that this whale makes is much different, it's much higher than any other whale in the world. A blue whale, for example, can reach about 39 Hertz, and a fin whale can hit heights of around 20 Hertz. So this creature has a much higher pitched call than anything we're aware of. Only thing is that with as many things in the deep blue, we just haven't seen it. The sea is so vast, I always hear that we've explored more of space than we have the sea, and the 52 Hertz whale is easily an example of this. What could it look like? Why is it so high pitched? What sorts of mysteries could this creature be used to unlock? It's impossible to say and we might never know because we might never see it. Speaking of which, do you know any deep sea mysteries or conspiracy theories? Any ideas of creatures that lurk under the depths of the ocean? Let me know down in the comments because I'd be interested to see. This one's quite interesting I'd say, it's the Zayumaru carcass. If you're unaware, the Zayumaru carcass was an unidentified carcass of an animal that rose to prominence all the way back in 1977 after being caught off the coast of New Zealand. As I said before, the carcasses were unidentified, and that's why they became famous. Because even to this day, 44 years later, we don't have a full answer. Several scientists have claimed that the animal wasn't a fish, a whale, or any other mammal. Some people think that the animal was a washed up plesiosaur. Others think that perhaps it was a basking shark, and a few others think that the animal is completely undiscovered before. Whatever it was, this foul smelling 10 meter long thing has been the source of intrigue and mystery, not only for the people around Christchurch, New Zealand, where it was found, but also the rest of the world for almost half a century now. And we just have no idea what it is. It could be anything. Trunco is a cute little design of a creature, but similar to the Octo Shark thing back a few entries ago, its existence is automatically dismissible, but nonetheless, it's a fun little design. This is an elephant dolphin looking thing, and it was first discovered, apparently, back in 1924, meaning that Trunco is about to turn 100 very soon. It wasn't until 2010, however, until there was supposedly a picture of the cryptid. People describe it as roughly 14 meters long, possessing snowy white fur, the face of an elephant, with a lobster-like tail, and the carcass of the animal was apparently devoid of blood, weirdly enough. Aside from that, not too much else is known about Trunco, but some say that its offspring still swim around the ocean to this very day, waiting for its elephant trunk to be of practical use, which it never will. Aside from that, it seems to have a lot of fans on the wikis, a lot of people seem to really like it, even if the most common explanation of the creature was that it was a decomposing carcass. People still seem to really like the creature, and it's a cool design, provided that you know that it goes no deeper than that, it's a cool design, doesn't actually exist. The Minhokau is the next creature I have on my list for you today. The Minhokau, if I pronounce that correctly, directly translates to Big Earthworm in Brazilian Portuguese. And as that would suggest, this thing is meant to be a very large earthworm. Now, this creature is thought to be a burrowing animal, producing enormous trenches as it digs, which suggests a body diameter of up to 10 feet. 
Its body length is stated to vary from 75 up to 150 feet, which if it were to exist would make it one of the largest animals in the world. Too bad that if the claims are true, this thing would be just as long if not longer than the blue whale, which would make the amount of food necessary for it to not only survive but also thrive be an absolutely gargantuan amount, rendering this creature unsustainable by the sheer size of it. Also, we would have seen it. It's quite hard to hide something that's 100 feet long. But anyways, I digress. Some people seem to think that the Minhakao is related to the Mongolian death worm, whereas others on the cryptid wikis seem to say that this isn't real, but there is a similar creature that is, but nobody really seems to go into detail about it. It could be the Mongolian death worm that we're talking about, despite that creature also being a cryptid whose legitimacy is greatly debated. Yeah, it seems to be a bit of a mess when it comes to all these death worms. Let's move on to the Katingvoa, a very cool looking animal indeed, also known as the snake eating cow. The Katingvoa is a cryptid that is said to exist in Cambodia and Vietnam. The Katingvoa is described as a cow like animal with peculiar twisting horns about 20 inches long and spotted in fur. The first evidence found of this creature was a set of horns found in 1994. It was unlike anything seen before, and those who found it believed that it could belong to a new species. This species would go on to become the Kating Voa. There's also an earlier report of British hunters in the first part of the 20th century observing several Kating Voa and shooting and killing them to use as tiger bait. There is, according to scientists, a strong chance that it at one time did exist, even if the chances of the species still being alive today are considerably smaller. Nobody really has anything too interesting to say about the species. It just seems to be very under the radar compared to our more recent creatures, but you know, that is the way the iceberg works. So let's keep on moving down. Some pictures of these basilisks are completely stupid and I love it. So if you don't know, a basilisk is a legendary reptile that's said to be the king of the serpents and is reputed to have the power to cause death with a single glance. Bit anime for my likings, but that's the creature's claim. Speaking of the species, whilst it was once a great source of fear, now basilisks are almost forgotten. The animal is said to have a snake's tail and body with a cockerel's head, legs, wings and crest. The skin is either black and yellow or khaki camouflage. The basilisk is said to be able to kill with its gaze and wither vegetation. The only animal said to be immune to the basilisk's gaze is a weasel, and the only way to defeat one is to set it up against said weasel or for the basilisk to hear the sound of a rooster crow. Again, it sounds a bit weird that these animals could defeat it. It's a weasel, you know. But this great titan of a creature has the head of a cockerel. A cockerel? Weird animal, complete shit. The lizard man of Scapor Swamp. Could this thing be proof that dinosaurs were walking among us humans? Probably not, but let's make the case for it. This right here is the lizard man of Scapor Swamp, a being that was supposedly sighted all the way back in 1929 by a group of Native Americans in Georgia. However, it wouldn't be till the 1980s when this thing would be spotted again, and this time it became famous. What it was doing for 60 years is unknown, but anyways, so it was spotted by a Christopher Davis, a 17 year old at the time, who became locally famous for the sighting. He claimed the creature had three fingers on each hand, long black nails that were accompanied by green rough skin. Now the locals in the area were understandably a bit startled at the thought that this man-sized creature could be lurking just outside town, and so there was a one million dollar bounty put on the head of the lizard man. If anyone could hunt the six foot behemoth, they would become a millionaire. But aside from a man by the name of Kenneth Orr who claims to have shot and injured it, nobody else has ever come forward to claim the money. Kenneth Orr had likely shot something else trying to pass off animal blood and scales as evidence. He was also forced to recant his findings after he was arraigned for unlawful use of his gun and the misdemeanor of filing a false police report. It was all a bit of a shambles. The Queensland Tiger is a cryptid reported to live in the Queensland area in Eastern Australia that is similar to the thylacine, which with fantastic English like that, I have no idea why people will criticize cryptidsfandom.com, but anyways, the Queensland Tiger is supposedly a very large marsupial with the earliest recorded sightings of the being coming from all the way back in 1871. Since the 1950s, however, the sightings have been diminishing. Many cryptozoologists, who are the people who study cryptids for all of those who are unaware, link the fate of the Queensland tiger to the fate of the thylacine, a creature that we spoke about 
in the cryptid's iceberg, but others think that by doing so you make something like the thylacine, which is a creature that might actually exist, sound like it doesn't by linking it with a creature that has never had any solid evidence to confirm its existence. It's got a cool design, but I think that a lot of these just have cool designs, they're just not real. And the Queensland Tiger is another one that I just don't buy that it's real, despite it looking cool. It just doesn't actually have any scientific evidence of it being real. A mysterious animal was sighted in May of 2011 off Peak Station. This animal was subsequently identified from a museum skin as a desert rat kangaroo. The area in which it was found was then surveyed in August the same year, but to no avail. You might ask, what is a desert rat kangaroo? Apparently, it's none of these things. Not quite desert rat, not quite kangaroo. It's said to be herbivorous, feeding on small foliage and other desert vegetation. And the only meat that it would ever consume comes in the form of small weevils and other pests that it would go hunting for for minutes, if not hours. Now, the thing that made this sighting exciting was that by 2011, the desert rat kangaroo was considered to be extinct. It did actually exist once upon a time. It had been thought to be extinct, however, since the 1800s. So how could we have spotted it? Well, throughout its extinction, the mammal has been spotted time and time again with us declaring that it's unextinct before it dies and we declare it's extinct again. It became unextinct in the early 1900s before the red fox came and killed them all and then the creature went extinct again. So who knows? I think that the numbers are just extremely small, but I also think the desert rat kangaroo might still be out there somewhere. We have a winner for the animal with the coolest design, but also the stupidest. The Maltese tiger looks damn cool. And I can see why this has been made. It's a bit of fun fan art, you know, but like most of these, you can't go around thinking this thing is real. It's so obviously fake. Apparently it comes from China, and apparently the reason why no one sees them anymore is because they're critically endangered. Not like if they did exist, their color would instantly make them stand out or anything. The Maltese tiger was apparently first spotted back in 1910, and because the black tiger exists, people somehow have done some mental gymnastics to say that a blue tiger could also exist. Now, is it cool? Fuck yes. Is it real? No. Please don't let cryptozoologists trick you. It's a cool design, but it's only that. A blue tiger could not exist. I mean, imagine that. It would be just a dead giveaway. It would never catch any prey. There's a reason why tigers tend to be earthy colors, why they're orange and yellow and white and black. It's because they blend in. Blue does not blend in in the Sahara. <laughs> Coming to the bottom of the iceberg now, we have Gwyneth Penry's blog, which is an undiscovered animal that was spotted off the coast of Thailand. It's often referred to as Dolphin One Animal or the Thai mystery creature, but what makes this animal so interesting to so many is that we just don't have an answer for what it is. The animal is 30 to 40 centimeters long and 5 to 10 centimeters thick, originally being reported by Gwyneth Penry back in 2007. That's where the name comes from. This is the kind of cryptid that I like because this is something. We don't know exactly what, but we do know that this unknown creature exists. We don't know where it lives. We don't know how many of them there are. We don't know what its diet is. We don't know much of anything about it, especially about deep sea creatures. We don't know anything about them really, but whatever it is could give us the keys to the mysteries of life if we could analyze it. And that's something to get excited about over say a blue tiger, which looks cool, but is clearly a hoax. Sure, fact isn't always as fun as fiction, but fact is real. And at least to me, that's what makes it interesting. The Canadian mountain creature that was caught running behind the Google car is the last entry on our list. And it's an interesting one. Google Maps found this, which if you have a very creative imagination, you might be able to make out what some people claim to be the Canadian mountain creature. It doesn't appear to have any hands and it might be trying to get out of the shots. It's perhaps shy, who knows? Could this creature too tell us the secrets, the mysteries of life? Or is this just a tree stump? Who could answer such a question? <laughs> In actuality, yeah, it's probably just a tree stump or something stupid. It's about six pixels. So who knows? It's not as convincing as say the blob from Thailand. 
but anyways that's it from me that's the last creature i'll cover today because i want to get this video out so if you enjoyed this video please hit that big red subscribe button follow me on all of my socials join my discord and support me on patreon all of the links will be in the description as always shout out to my current patrons cage 101 101 and chris m you guys are mega legends and i'll be doing some cool stuff for you very soon also shout out to the original creator of this iceberg humane bot fly you made this video possible so shout out to you and finally let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next as i'm only 61 videos in and i'm already out of ideas thank you for watching